Uh, hello everybody, uh, my name is Hatch and today's topic is very exciting, interesting and fun. It is time travel. Yes, you heard it right, it is time traveling. But don't worry, um, this is a photography channel, this is not a science class, so no need to know about quantum physics or um, the theory of relativity. I don't even really know who Einstein is. All we need is actually the Nikon Z9 uh, running at least on the firmware um, version 2, but I would recommend having the latest uh, firmware. It's been a while um, that I want to test this uh, time travel function um, in the Nikon Z9 or what Nikon call it a pre-release capture um, and finally last week um, I had time and I want to share with you my uh, time traveling experience don't be too excited though we cannot go back years in time with the Nikon Z9 um, all it can offer for now is actually a one second worth of uh, past images but it's still a time travel right so how does this work then um, let's say I'm watching my subject um, waiting for them to do something interesting so I'm already um, holding my shutter button half pressed and then here we go my subject um, did something interesting probably the shot of the year but and then I missed it because first of all the way um, a mirrorless um, is designed basically once you see that image in your viewfinder that moment is already gone but also um, the older I get the slower my reaction so definitely I missed the shot but now with these new features in the Nikon Z9 it's a different story as soon as I half press the shutter release button the camera actually already record the images uh, in its internal buffer and as soon as I fully press the button the camera wrote those past images in the memory card but also uh, keep shooting like just any normal camera Therefore, for sure, I did not miss that shot. But we cannot launch the space shuttle without uh, turning on the engine. So the first thing that we need to do is actually uh, to activate this uh, pre-release capture in the Nikon Z9 setting. Don't worry, this is actually uh, pretty easy. Just two little steps. Uh, first of all, um, go to your uh, menu and then custom setting menu. And then scroll down or up uh, to D, shooting and display. Once you are there, go down or up until you are in the four pre-release capture options. Validate that and then you will be faced with two options there. So on the top first option, uh, Nikon asks us how far back in time do we want to travel. Again, cannot go back more than one second, remember that. So go to pre-release first and uh, select how far do you want to go. For me, I choose the maximum one second. And then on the second option, the post-release burst is actually just like the normal shutter in the camera. Basically, it just means like, do you want to take the picture while you fully pressed the button? And for me, I just put it to maximum, max. But that does not mean though that we can fully press that shutter until our beard is one meter long and our hair is completely gray. Again, Nikon just offer us four seconds of burst. But I find it still more than enough for my need. Now the next step is where uh, I get confused because I thought that all I need to do is actually to change the image quality to JPEG but actually we need to use um, Nikon Z9's custom drive mode which are the C30 or C60 or C120. The easiest way to do that is actually to hold the drive mode uh, button here and then just scroll the rear uh, wheel and then choose 
30 or 60 or C120. For now, I'm choosing C30, which again, I find it more than enough for my need. Once that is done, actually, we are already ready to go. If you look at your display or through the viewfinder, you should see this little pre-release capture uh, symbol. If you don't see that on your uh, display, and then don't worry, you are already ready to go. It's just that you don't see this um, information on your display. But we can fix that. Just cycle through your display option by pressing the disk button between your uh, photo and your video switch. Then once you press it, then you will end up at one of the options which where you could see that uh, pre-release symbol. Same thing for the viewfinder. Put your eyes up on the viewfinder, then press that display button. And then in one of the display options that you have, you should have then the pre-release um, symbol there. If you still don't have it there, and then it means maybe you already changed something in your display option and you need then to um, adjust it back. So I will walk you through it, don't worry. Just go again to your menu, custom setting menu, shooting and display again, but this time go down to D18, right? D18, where it says custom monitor shooting display. You will see now a list of display that you can cycle through. Just choose one of them and then make sure in one of them that at least that option says simple is checkmarked, right? Once you are done, just press the menu and then, and then now go back, like if you will take a picture and then you should see there the pre-release symbol. If not, and then just keep pressing that display button and cycle through it and then you should see it at one of your display options. How about the viewfinder? Same thing again. Go to menu, custom setting menu and then shoot in and display. This time go down to D19, custom viewfinder shooting display, right? Same thing again, choose one of the display you want to use and then make sure that the option simple is actually checkmarked. Once you're done, just click the menu button. Then this time, once you look through your viewfinder, you should see the pre-release symbol there. If not, again, just cycle through your display option and in one of them, it should be there. Uh, so now, uh, when you hold the shutter release button half pressed, there will be a tiny uh, green dot on that pre-capture uh, release symbol. It means that the camera is actually recording images in its internal memory. And as soon as you fully press the shutter release button, uh, the camera will write um, on the memory card uh, the last one second of those images. But time traveling is not cheap. The ticket to be paid is actually no row allowed, only JPEG. Therefore, make sure that the image uh, coming straight from the camera is actually as good as you want it to be. First of all, make sure that you use the right white balance. Usually I get good result with just um, the daylight uh, auto white balance if I'm outside, but you might also want to experiment with um, cloudy or uh, sunny if um, it's a sunny day where you shoot. The next things to be aware of is actually picture control. Did you put enough sharpness or did you put too much sharpness in the picture? How about uh, the vibrance of the pictures, the contrast and clarity? You can also, of course, um, apply some vignette or um, distortion control. Uh, there is also the, uh, what Nikon say, um, delighting features, which allow you to squeeze a little bit of dynamic range in the photos. 
and don't forget also then to use um, the noise reduction um, if you do not plan to use different software to remove the noise in your uh, photos uh, personally i don't use the camera's internal uh, denoise option instead i use uh, topaz denoise find it better and finally don't forget to expose your photos correctly do not underexpose like the way you used to do it with uh, raw files because the jpeg is actually less forgiven than the raw file that is everything we need to do we are now ready to rock and roll and here are a um, couple of um, sample images that I took. They are not uh, my best pictures, far from being award winning images, but it's just kind of to show you guys like the potential of this um, time traveling features in the Z9. But because there is no such things as freemium, here are my thoughts about um, this um, pre-release capture in the Nikon Z9. First of all, uh, the limitation on uh, image quality. Uh, as I said before, we are limited to a JPEG. If you decided to shoot in C30 or C60 and then you will have then a JPEG normal uh, full size L or you can call it large. If you, on the other hand, decided to choose the C120, which means you're gonna take a picture at 120 frames per second, and then your only option will be JPEG normal size S, which is an 11 megapixel image. Me personally, I did not find it that much disturbing to shoot in JPEG because anyway I like the way um, the Nikon camera render um, images. Now then I don't need to spend actually extra time um, in Lightroom while all I want to do is actually uh, to mimic um, the same vibrancy and contrast that I see on the JPEG image anyway. I mean after all um, people have been taking like award-winning uh, JPEG photos for decades uh, before rows actually come into the scene. A and honestly, my raw images are far worse than those award-winning JPEG pictures. Some people might also find the 11 megapixel uh, image size um, limiting, but keep in mind though that 11 megapixel you can still print it at full resolution on a 50 centimeters by 30 centimeters canvas if you don't print you can view an 11 megapixels pictures at full resolution on a 4k monitor and i don't plan to check my image at more than 4k monitors in addition not gonna look at it like I don't know 10 centimeters from the monitor so I think it's still um, good enough in some situation some people also suggest that rather than using this um, uh, pre-release capture in the Z9 why not just do a frame capture from an 8k um, video taken at 30 frames per second or from a 4K video taken at 120 frames per second. Yes, it might be possible in some circumstances, but I think um, that will not work um, when it comes to a bird in flight. Because, for example, to take a sharp picture of a flying passerine bird, I usually use a shutter speed more than one three thousandth a second. Um, if I record uh, a movie at 30 frames per second, it means my shutter speed is at 1 per 60 seconds. And even if I record the movie at 120 frames per second, it means my shutter speed is just at 1 per 200 
41 per 250th second and that is just too slow to freeze the, the action when it comes to a bird photography. Yeah, maybe we can also record the movie at 1 per 3000th second, but first of all, um, that will look quite unnatural uh, to the human eyes. Um, and also I think a little bit unpractical because you'll end up with a huge big files of a movie just for one shot of a bird in flight and can you imagine like scrolling uh, that movie uh, frame by frame uh, I think um, I would rather use instead the pre-release capture option I'm also glad that actually the Z9 do not have um, a mechanical shutter because just to a few hours um, playing around with uh, this pre-release capture, I ended up with thousands of uh, images. So can you imagine using a mechanical shutter and then break your shutter in just a couple of days or a couple of weeks? Um, no way. I also thought that deleting the image will be quite a hassle, but actually it's not that difficult because you just go to the, um, the patch of uh, the images, you know, like, oh, okay, it is one here, one, two, three here where um, the bird is flying. Delete the rest. And then afterwards, you just have like three, four pictures to choose from, right? Uh, one thing I find strange with this uh, pre-capture release feature is that if you uh, hold the shutter release button half pressed longer than 30 seconds that little green dots on the symbol will turn to an exclamation mark which means that now you need to remove your finger from the shutter release button and then restart again uh, the pre-release capture uh, i don't understand why uh, nikon did not uh, program these features uh, to a loop uh, so that the new data will then overwrite the old data uh, continuously and therefore uh, as long as um, we hold the shutter release button half pressed the camera will be able to uh, always record uh, the data in its internal memory no matter it's uh, 30 seconds or uh, one minute or uh, five minutes. But my own problem uh, with this um, uh, pre-release capture time travel with the Z9 is actually um, the autofocus. Uh, I don't know, maybe I said it wrong or what, but almost all the pictures that I like with the nice open wing position, etc. All of them was a little bit blurred, um, a bit out of focus. So I ended up applying a little bit of like local sharpening on each of the, the images. My opinion is that the camera could not uh, keep up tracking the bird um, once you shoot that uh, 30 frames per second. So for what situation is actually then this um, pre-release capture? Uh, I think it is actually completely useless if you try to take picture of a bird which is already in flight. But I think it's great for taking picture of a bird which is just about um, to fly. Um, if you have also like, I don't know, perch or a feeder where you are pre-focused and then bird come to visit it and then in that case i think it can also be useful so um that's it for um this time travel pre-release capture with uh, the nikon z9 i find it fun and quite useful so i think i will still uh, use it every now and then in the field and until next time then bye